In this video, we're going to take a look at another logarithmic scale, the decibel scale. So first, we're just going to take a look at the nature of noise. So noise or sounds or loudness, it's actually, they're very complex forms of energy. And they're made up of many distinct parts. Pitch, frequency, tone, intensity, pressure, and different instruments are used to measure all of these parameters. But the two we're particularly interested in are the two that are measured by decibels. Sound intensity, the power per square meter, and the sound pressure. Both of these are described by the decibel level. So first of all, just to talk a little bit about the decibel. So the decibel, it's a measure used to describe the intensity or pressure of a sound. So note I don't say it's a unit. It's not a unit. It's a level. So just initially there was the bell. And the bell went from 0 to 14. So the whole range of human hearing was compressed using logs to this similar to pH but we can see it's very limited like for the whole human hearing experience to be discompressed was impractical so then they introduced the decibel and simply there's 10 decibels in each bell so now the whole range of human hearing can be described using a level between 0 and 140 but it's very important to note that it's a log scale So it's unusual because it's got this log nature, but this scale is necessary because the human ear is so sensitive. The lowest sound we can hear is called the threshold of hearing, and this has a pressure of 20 micropascals. Now we're going to come back to this again, so just take note of it. This becomes our reference level later on when we're doing calculations. The loudest noise a human ear, human ear can hear is called the threshold of pain and this is 200 million micropascals so there's a range of 10 million from the quietest sound and the loudest sound the loudest sound is 10 million times louder than the quieter sound and it's very hard to kind of even talk about these kind of numbers in any sense in any meaningful sense so this is whenever we have a large range of possible inputs we often use a log scale to describe them so now decibels are used to determine how loud a noise is they're used to describe the sound intensity or the sound pressure and just particularly for the health and safety students and the environmental students, it's very important to know which parameter is being measured or being described by decibels. It doesn't matter so much for our maths because we're going to just stick mainly to pressure for our calculations. But just the students who will actually encounter decibels in the workplace, they need to be aware that decibels are talking about two different things and you need to know which one they're talking about. So on a decibel scale, the smallest sound we would hear is zero decibels. That's practically total silence. It's actually very hard to achieve in, a, in any kind of an environment. There's always noise. A sound 10 times more louder than this total near total silence is 10 decibels. A hundred, that's really one bell. So really it's kind of 10 to the power of one in terms of bells. A sound a hundred times more powerful than this near total silence is two bells or 20 decibels. A sound a thousand times more powerful than total silence is three bells or 30 decibels. So the bell is really the power on 10 and then we multiply that by 10 to turn that bell into decibels. 
So it's very important. This relationship is what makes decibels hard for uh, lay people to kind of understand that a small increase in decibels doesn't sound like much, but it can actually be a huge increase, as we'll see as we work through a few examples. So here's the decibel scale. This is the one in pressure. So on the right, we have the pressure levels, the pressure of a noise. And then on the left, we have the equivalent decibel value. So here we can see we multiply by 10 as we go up each level. But with decibels, then it's a linear jump. They're linear jumps for these multiples. And we'll take a look at these. We'll, there's, there's simple patterns and rules of thumb that uh, allow us kind of judge things fairly easily. Here's another one, just kind of taking a look at, you know, 140 decibels. This is where, you know, physical pain starts to occur. Permanent ear damage can occur. You can burst your eardrum. And then you can kind of see as well, 40 decibels is fairly, you know, that's fairly average noise. And even walking in the countryside, you would easily experience a noise level of 40 decibels. Achieving zero decibels is very difficult. You'd have to go into a sensory deprivation kind of chamber to even get close. So now we're going to take a little bit of a look at the maths. And, you know, I just I need to explain the difference between the sound intensity. Are we looking at the power of the noise, power per meter squared? Or are we going to be looking at the pressure? So this is the crucial bit. Is power of a noise and its pressure have a quadratic relationship. So I is proportional to P squared. So now this formula would look like this. Instead of I, we now are putting in P squared. Using the rules of logs, remember the third rule of logs, any power can be brought down. Remember n times the log of a, the log of a to the power of n is n times the log of a. The power just comes down and is multiplied. So this is the function we'll be using most, but we're going to take a look at both functions and kind of in, in comparison before we move into any kind of proper calculations. This value P0, that's the reference pressure. And this is the quietest sound a human can hear. Remember I mentioned it earlier, 20 micropascals, 20 by 10 to the power of minus six. That's two by 10 to the minus five. I'm sure you remember that. And that's where this value comes from. So again, we're comparing the pressure of a noise, say a drill being used to the quietest sound the human can hear. So all log scales work on that basis of comparing a value to some base level. In pH, we compare the number of hydrogen ions to the number of hydrogen ions in distilled water, which is kind of gives us a value of one for our comparisons. In Richter, we compare the movement of the earth to the smallest movement detectable. Again, I'm just emphasizing this. It's very important when you're talking decibels to know which parameter has been described by them. So in the next example now, I'm just going to work through an example using the pressure formula first, sound pressure level, SPL formula. Our reference pressure is this, 20 micropascals. And now describe the decibel level of a noise that has a sound pressure of 120 millipascals. So remember 120 milli. So I just feed this in for P. And the other value goes into the bottom. Sorry, that looks a little bit messy. This value goes into the top of the formula. And this value goes in for P0. And when you get your calculator, 
you should arrive at an answer of 76 decibels. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double the pressure of the noise. So it's the same calculation, only we now put in 240 by 10 to the minus 3 for P0. The reference pressure stays the same. And the decibel level has increased by 6 to 82. Now I'm going to double this value again. So it goes from 240 to 480. Again. And again we see it's increased by 6 decibels to 88. And if I double the sound pressure again, it increases to 94 decibels. So from this we can develop a rule of thumb to describe the relationship between sound pressure level and decibels. And the rule of thumb is if we double the sound pressure, the decibel level increases by 6 decibels. The converse is also true. If we have the sound pressure, the decibel level will decrease by 6 decibels. So that's the rule of thumb. Double the pressure results in an increase of 6 decibels. But if we look at the sound intensity formula, we'll do the exact same process. Now we're looking at the power formula, the intensity level, SIL formula. Here's that formula, it doesn't have the squared element. The reference intensity is 1 by 10 to the minus 12. And now I start with 40 microwatts because it gives me the same starting point, 76 decibels. Now if I double the sound intensity to 80 microwatts, the decibel level increases by 3 decibels. And we'll see this, we double it again, it's increased by 3, the decibel level. Double the intensity level again, and again it gives us an increase of 3 decibels. So the rule of thumb for sound intensity level is if I double the sound intensity or the sound power it's very often called that causes a rise of three decibels so this is what I'm saying is if you're reading a report and it says this uh, this new bridge is going to cause an increase of traffic in the area and will cause an increase of six decibels well are we talking sound pressure levels in that case the noise in the area would have doubled or are we talking sound intensity levels? An increase of 6 decibels would mean it's doubled and then doubled again. So the area would be exposed to four times the noise. So that's why I'm saying it's very important to understand which parameter has been described by decibels because changes in decibels are different dependent on which of those parameters is being measured. So I'm going to leave sound intensity here guys. From now on we're only going to take a look at sound pressure levels. But for the people who will be working in industry it's very important to understand that distinction. This is an exposure time chart and this is based on sound intensities. And what it's simply saying is if the noise level in an area is doubled that's what's happening here each time from the previous example. Then the permissible exposure time is halved. So this is the maximum amount of time an employee should be exposed to this level of noise during a full eight hour shift. And appropriate protection must be provided and the employee must wear it. So there's a very strong health and safety aspect associated with noise and how much noise an employee is exposed to in the workplace. You can see if you're exposed to very loud noises, the maximum exposure time in an 8-hour shift is very, very short. For obvious reasons, it's to protect people's health. So now we're going to take a look again. Everything from now on will be SPL. And we're going to take a look at how this formula can be manipulated to give us this new formula. Now, I'm going to take you through the manipulation very quickly because there's nothing new in the manipulation. You guys should be, you know, 
uh, you should be familiar with what I'm doing, but I'm not going to ask you to derive the formula in any case. In any exam scenario, you'd be given all the formulas you need, but it's just to it's just important to kind of show that, you know, the maths isn't beyond you either. So I don't really like to say, oh, this formula can be manipulated and give us this, you know. So that's what we're going to do on the next slide is just take you through that manipulation. So now here's our formula and we're taking a look at a two noise level. So the level, there's a new level, L1, and this is P1 and, you know, this is its associated pressure over the reference. And then there's another level L2. And we're going to subtract the two of them. We want to get the difference in noise levels. Determining change in decibel levels. That's what we want to do, get a formula that gives us that. We're looking for L1 minus L2. So it's simply this bit minus this bit. Now, because of our log rules, First thing though, before we use the log rules, we're going to tidy up these logs by moving the powers up, or moving the 20 up as a power. I hope you're okay with that, that's rule three. Now we've clean logs, we have log A minus the log of B, so that becomes the log of A over B. That's rule two from your logs. Now from fractions, if I have 3 squared over 2 squared, we can just write that as 3 over 2 to be squared. And that's what we do in the next line. Now we have division of two fractions. This fraction has been divided by this one. Remember, flip the lower fraction and multiply. That's what's going on here. And now these P zeros will cancel. Finally then, bring the power back down in front of the log and we've achieved the formula for determining the change in decibel levels. So again guys, I, w I wouldn't ask you to do that manipulation, but I hope you'll recognize there's nothing I did that we haven't covered fairly extensively in classes, either in first semester with the fractions or second semester with the logs. So now we'll show how the formula is actually used. So this is just a simple example to kind of get us going. In an industrial environment, the sound pressure is doubled when an air blower is switched on. Determine the change in decibel levels. Now we're not told the sound pressure, but the great thing about this formula is, is we don't actually need to know any particular values. We just need to know the ratio of the new value. P1 is new. P2 is old. We just need to know the ratio between them. So the new value in this case is twice the old value. What we get on the right, on the left, is the change in dB. L1 and L2 are standing for the decibel levels. So when we double the sound pressure, we feed these values into the calculator. And when you do that, you end up with plus six decibels. So the change, now change guys can vary in science. We very often just use delta. Delta dB, the change in decibel levels, is plus 6 decibels. So this kind of confirms mathematically the rule of thumb we developed for sound pressure levels on previous slides. But now in the next slides, we're going to take a look at more practical examples. Here we have 40 identical machines are operating in a factory, and they produce an overall noise level of 68 decibels. Determine the new decibel level this is the formula we're going to be using. If 40 more machines are switched on, 120 more machines are switched on. Now these are all referring back to the original 40, but we look at each example as we go along. 20 machines are switched off, or 30 machines are switched off. So the rule of thumb, guys, is great. That We could use the rule of thumb for answer one. We'll take a look. 
well we have 40 machines what happens if 40 more machines are switched on well we've doubled the sound pressure so therefore we'd expect an increase of six but when we just feed values into the formula this is the new number of machines this is the old number of machines so that's all we need to do is compare new to old as expected that gives us an increase of six decibels so the rule of thumb would have got us there but now the original noise level was 68 with the doubling of the number of machines the overall noise level in the facility is now 74 decibels now we look at part b 120 more identical machines are switched on now if you think about it guys we've doubled it that would give us um 40 more machines were switched on and then double again so really this is actually the number of machines are been doubled and then they're been doubled again so i would predict that when i double the first time i'd get six decibels and then when i double it again i get another six decibels but we don't need to kind of use the rule of thumb it's just the rule of thumb would apply for the first two examples we can just stick in there's 160 machines now compared to when there was 40 and when you do the maths we do get 12 decibels the original noise level was 68 we add 12 to it now the overall noise level would be 80 decibels even though we've quadrupled the noise level so for people who are working in that facility the, the sound around them has quadrupled in volume but that's only resulted in a 12 decibel increase. Here now, 20 machines are switched off, so we've halved the decibel level. We would expect minus 6 dB, but the formula gives us that. And this is the new decibel level. And the final example is if 30 machines are switched off well we've halved it that would give us 20 machines switched off and then have it again so there's only one quarter of the machines left working we've halved and then halved we would subtract two decibels two six decibels for each halving using the rule of thumb but the formula gets us there nicely as well so the rule of thumb is very good when things have been doubled or halved but in the real world that doesn't happen at all like it's you know normally it might be three machines are switched off or 27 machines are switched on so the formula is much more robust than the rule of thumb because it can accommodate once we know the relationship between new and old we can calculate any associated change in decibels using our formula and again guys the formulas always be given to you in an exam scenario you're not expected to learn stuff off by heart so if we switched off three quarters of the machines we would reduce the noise level by 12 decibel and the new overall level would be 56 so that's how the formula is used now in the next example well this is one for you guys to try What happens if 15 machines, so there's 40 machines working, what happens if 15 more machines are switched on? 85 more machines are switched on. 6 machines are switched off. Or 25 machines are switched off. So remember all the time. So just say for part D, 25 machines are switched off. We're always referring back to 40 for each question a b c and d always refers back to the 40 of the initial so well there was 40 machines and 25 are switched off so what we would be getting here if 25 machines are switched off you're really just looking up that's your answer well this will give you the change in level for part d and you then either add or subtract that from 68 so I think the previous examples makes it fairly clear. I let you guys have a go with them. And now we're going to take a look at ones where 
the rule of thumb doesn't apply. So your example, the one you just did there, would be similar to some of these. What happens if 10 more machines are switched on? What happens if 20% of the machines are switched off? Three quarters of the machines are switched off. And then this one, this is my favorite. If the noise levels need to be brought down to 65 decibels for health and safety reasons, how many machines must be switched off? So that's the kind of, that's the question I like most because it basically involves the most maths. We look at ABC though first. We're using this formula each time. 10 more machines are switched on. Well, there was 24 machines. We're switching on 10. So our ratio of new is to old is this. Then we get the log and then we get 20. And when you get your calculator, rounding up if necessary or down, we just always bring it to the nearest whole decibel level generally. We get an increase of three decibels the noise level was 70, so the new noise level would be 73. Part B, if 20% of the machines are switched off. Now, you don't have to go off and get 20% of 24. This is the beauty of the formula because it's nice and simple. We can just compare the percentages. If 20% of the machines are switched off, well, 80% are left. And we can compare that to the original. Well, there was 100% of machines. So we don't need to kind of get 20% of the machines. You could do that, but you're just creating extra layers of unnecessary maths. When we get this, we get minus 1.9. Always round up, so that's approximately minus 2. So the new decibel level would be 68 decibels. Generally, it's inappropriate, guys, to use decimals with decibels because decimals are linear. They're divisions of 10. Decibels is a log scale, so it's inappropriate to use decimals in a log scale because decimals are linear. Your kind of scales are clashing. So this is why with decibels, it's most appropriate just to round up or round down to the nearest whole decibel. So here's part C, if three quarters of the machines are switched off. Well, we just need to know, well, there's only one quarter of the machines switched on. We've actually seen this before in the previous example. That's minus 12. So the new noise level then is 58 decibels. Now the last question, part D. We actually know the change in levels. The new level is 65. The old level is 70. So we want to change the level by minus 5. We actually know our answer. We also know the old number of machines. There was 24 machines initially. What, need, what we need to do is ask, well, P1 how many new machines can be left on? That's what we want to calculate. So our first step is to manipulate the function for our P1. So first thing I'm going to do, I want to get P1 on its own. I want to get rid of the 20. I want to get rid of the log. And then I want to get rid of P2. So to get rid of the 20, divide both sides by 20. Now the next step, I want to kill the log. Remember, if I want to kill a log, what kills log? 10 to the power of both sides. So the left-hand side is going to look a little bit odd, guys, but don't let that put you off. When we apply 10 to the power to the right-hand side, that will kill the log. And this is what we get. Finally, now we want to move P0. It's joined on by division, so we multiply. Sorry, we want to move P2, forgive me. So we multiply both sides by P2. And that's what gets us here. Finally, just write P1 on the left. And like I said, we know all the values 
on the input side. We know P2, that's the old number of machines. 2, the subset, the subscript of 2 always means old. Subscript of 1 means new. So the new noise level we require is 65. The old noise level was 70. Now you can obviously just save a little bit of maths and write in minus 5 there. Feed in the values. And when you get your calculator, that says only 13 and a half machines can be left on. Now you can't leave on half a machine. It's either on or it's off. So really we can only have 13 machines on. If we round it up to 14, that's slightly more machines than is permissible and the noise level is going to be slightly too high. So for this reason, 13 machines, we always have to round down in this case because you can't leave on a, des a percentage of a machine. So 13 machines can be switched left on. So in order to achieve that, 11 machines must be switched off. So you can see there's a little bit more maths to that than there was in the previous examples. So you'll meet these in Moodle as well, but I have a question here for you guys. So pause the video. And just using the same techniques I used just through that example. Have a go at these questions. So now we're going to move on again. We're no longer looking at change in decibel levels. We're going to take a look at adding decibels. So what if every machine had a different decibel level, which would be far more common than 40 identical machines operating. Now, there's loads of facilities that have 40 identical machines operating, etc. But usually a facility would have, say, eight of one machine and three of another and two of another. And, and decibel ratings, guys, you can always find a decibel rating on the nameplate of a machine. Any machine that's shipped into Ireland that has a noise level of over 40 decibels must have the operating noise level on the nameplate and that's nearly always in SPL. So we'll take a look. So when we're adding decibels it's not like adding sheep. If we have one sheep and we add another sheep now we've got two sheeps. Decibels because it's log this is a linear sheeps are linear whereas decibels are logarithmic. If we add 10 decibels to 10 decibels we don't end up with 20 decibels hopefully you lot will be thinking we should end up with 10 because we're doubling the noise level we would actually end up with 16 decibels if we doubled 10 decibels that's the real answer so to add decibels the following formula must be used and it looks a bit nasty but don't worry about it, it's actually quite easy to use. The sigma means sum of, that means we add. So if there's four different types of machine, we need to do this bit four different times. SPL, guys, is just the noise level of the machine. So that's what goes in here. If a machine is 60 decibels, we put 60 in there. But I think it's easier just to explain with an example rather than going into the formula too much. I really like this formula, but I'll explain that towards the end of this example. So here's a typical example. So three different machines are operating in a facility, and each machine is known to have a given decibel rating. And this is, you know, as it says, it's common. You would find these on any noisy machine, even a hairdryer. If you take a look at the little nameplate on the side of a hairdryer, it'll tell you how noisy the hairdryer is. Dyson, uh, Hoovers and all, they always pride themselves on how quiet they are as well. So here's our three different noise levels and we want to add these together. And we can't just add them normally because if we added them together we'd have 60 plus 70 is 130, we'd have 195 decibels which would be ear splitting. That would, everybody in the facility would be stone deaf if that was the noise level. We can't add them because it's not a linear scale. We can't add them linearly. We have to use this formula. So here, we have 10 to the log. These will be explained later. 
but we're just using the formula there's the first machine there's the second machine and there's the third machine so each machine gets its own little calculation now when you're keying this into the calculator it's much quicker just rather than keying in 10 to the power of 60 divided by 10 60 divided by 10 we all know is just 6 65 divided by 10 is 6.5 so this is the calculation you would be most likely keying into the calculator and when you key this all in we end up with an SPL now that's sound pressure level that's decibels we end up with 71.5 decibels or really we would normally call that 72 decibels because we don't like decimals with decibels but now there's a real beauty to this formula I think like because what's actually going on here the 60 divided by 10 that's actually turning the value back into a bell that's the first step so the decibels are being turned back into bells and then they're being raised to the power of 10 which is killing the log part so we're going from bells then back into the number of micro pascals of each noise so that's what's going on inside the brackets the numbers are being converted from decibels into bells and then back into their constituent micro pascals these are then added together and then with this log we turn them back into bells and then we multiply by 10 and that converts it all back into decibels so I have all this laid out on a table here's the first step we go from decibels into bells now we're converting them into their micro pascals we add all the micro pascals together in this line then we turn the micro pascals we get the log of those micro pascals that turns it into bells and finally we multiply by 10 and that switches it all back to decibels so i really like that formula just to kind of there's a lot of maths going on in it but once you understand what's going on it's quite neat depending on your definition of neat so here's an example and you've actually done these calculations in the calculator quiz at the start of semester so we're asked or told we're told there's three reciprocating air compressors four scroll compressors two air hammers and eight heat exchangers so this is what the function now looks like here's the air compressors the reciprocating air compressors here's the scroll compressors two air hammers notice there's the three by four by two by we could write each one out individually but the equation would go on forever it's obviously much neater just to write three by now when you're reaching for your calculator rather than doing the 66 divided by 10 we go for this and now using the calculator we end up with 79 decibels and just bring it to the nearest whole decibel we end up with 79 so I hope it makes sense guys it's actually it's a nice easy formula to use just be careful obviously when you're keying everything into the calculator so as expected here's an example for you guys to try so pause the video have a go with this one and, there, and again the formula will be given to you in any exam situation similarly now here's a more complex one where there's several of each machine working And again, use the formula to figure out your answer. Bring your answer to the nearest whole decibel as well. So that, guys, brings us to the end of both decimals and kind of logs as well. So we'll finish up here. Thanks very much for listening.